Welcome to Game Design Lesson 13 Activity. In this case, you are going to animate your scene. Uh, let me be clear in this one, you are going to just make things move. It's not going to bounce. You're not going to control it. You're just getting it to move, right? That's what we learned in the last two lessons. So here's what we're doing. First thing is you're going to fill out the worksheet like we did for Lesson 10. Some of this you could just kind of grab from Lesson 10. But the first thing is, uh, a reminder, again, what I'm showing you is the bare minimum, right? Low C, high D, bare minimum that you need. But in this case, right, what, what animations are changing, right? What's being animated? The paddles, in my case, again, we're using Pong. Reminder, you can't use Pong for any of your projects. This is just the follow along so you can see what's going on. So in this case, the paddles go up and down, the ball goes left and down, right? So that's what's going to be at first because we can't control it. We just want to get it to move in this project. So you'll use your last photo. Uh, you can add, well, you will add arrows to it. Uh, you can recreate it if you need to. Again, this is the bare minimum. I should add like a cord or something. Again, bare minimum, showing you what's on there, what it looks like. You're just improving on your last one. Again, this is our project for the course. So you're going to just every time we do this, add a little bit more to it. And then this is exactly the same. So the sprites exactly the same as last time. So what are your sprites? Actual labels, the ones you actually call it in App Lab are going to call it in App Lab. Um, and they should be done already because you should have some already done. And I'll point that out when we get to this part as well. Um, the only change is if you add more, take some away, right? Just some update, right? This is this will be an update. Otherwise, it's mostly copy and paste. The next piece, though, this is new. You're going to take your sprite names. This is important. Whatever you called it, left paddle, R paddle, um, pipe, flappy bird, bird, whatever you're calling your actual labels, you'll call them down here. And then each each property you're going to change. And again, remember the properties are the dot x, the dot y, the dot velocity, dot scale, dot height. Those are the properties. Everything after the dot is a property of that sprite. So in this case, ball dot y, because I want to move the ball up and down. Ball dot x, because I want to move it left and right. And then ball dot scale, and we'll see why you need that in a second. The ball is too big. And then L paddle y, R paddle y, right? Those, those allow it to go up and down, right? So this is the y for the paddles and then the ball is going to be able to go up and down and it needs to be shrunk again we'll see that in a second and then it's a counter so I just was a little more specific counter up counter down uh, and that that's just the initial right so it's all counter so if you remember zero zero this is 400 400 so if you want it to go down it needs to go up Y needs to go up and if you want it to go up the Y needs to go down, right? And the same, same concept with the X. So again, you're just explaining. And again, everything that moves, everything that moves. Now not, in this case, this is all your sprites. So if you need platforms or anything that doesn't move, stuff for you to land on, uh, stuff for you to run into but doesn't move, all your sprites need to be here. Only the sprites that you move, only the sprites that you move do you need the properties of your rotation, if you have something that spins. And remember, What's going to happen is it's just going to fly off the screen, right? It's just going to fly off the screen. We'll see this in a second. That's fine. It's just going to fly off the screen for now. We're just trying to understand getting it to move. Now we move into actually building it. So this first piece is actually going to be a review. So it won't take me that long, but I should put some of the stuff in here. Um, hopefully you figured it out before, but we're going to go to animation. We are going to add our first paddle. The easiest way to do this is just I have my full extension and you don't need to be perfect on this I'm just gonna go straight down and you can see how I'm not super straight but what I can do is this space right here is part of the sprite when we actually get to the point where it bounces it's gonna bounce over here not over here right? you can see all this gray and you'll see as soon as I click this all that gray will go away right so over here you can see there's no gray over here so now it's gonna bounce only when it hits the actual thing and I can also clean this up real quick to make sure I only have blank spaces and then I can make a copy of it. And then real quick, I'm just going to change the colors. And I'll use the paint bucket, make this one red, go over here, make this one blue. And then I'm going to call them. So the, R, the red one I'm going to call um, right paddle. And then the left one I am going to call left paddle. Or the blue one I'm going to call left paddle. 
And you'll see why this is important in a second. And the last thing we need is the ball, right? If you look back to here, look to our screen, we have our paddles. We're going to go ahead and grab the ball. Now you can grab anything around. I could have a donut, a pizza, a germ go in here. Anything in here you can use uh, that makes sense. The dart, probably not so much. So I'll grab a blue soccer ball. And then I'm just going to call it ball. Some of these be easy enough to find, but for now, I want to make it nice and easy for us to find. So let's go back. We have nothing here. We need to grab our three sprites we just created. And then I'm going to call them R paddle, L paddle, and then ball. So those are our three sprites. If I run this, if I run this, nothing's going to happen because um, I haven't drawn them. But I'm going to go ahead and grab in uh, the draw function. We'll need that in a second. And I'm going to do the draw sprites. So we run this, and there are three squares all on top of each other. X, Y, 200, 200. So again, this is just all on top of itself. And it's the same thing. So the first thing I'm going to change, though, I'm going to set the animations. And for my sanity, I'm going to put them under each one. Now, you can put these under all the vars, but they do the variables need to be created first. So right paddle, copy, paste. Left paddle, copy, paste. And I'm just going to type ball because it makes that long. And now we set the animation. So right, R paddle is right paddle. This is why I named it on the other side. Left paddle is left paddle. And then the ball is ball. Now run this you'll see that the ball is on top of everything. I don't need to reorder anything. Once I shrink this, it'll work. So if we go to sprite.scale, and we go to ball, and I believe 0 0.1 will do the trick. All right, so we can see the other paddles. The right paddle is under the blue one, but that'll be a simple face. So we just move them to the right spot. Now remember, this is 400 over here. This is 0 over here. This is X and Y. So the Y is already good. I'm going to start everything in the middle. So the, the second 200 is good. But this right paddle, I need to move over here. And again, this is the red one. So when we change this, we'll see the red one. Now, I don't want 400 because that will technically put half of the paddle off. So I'm going to put 390. And this should do it. There you go. Red paddle's over there. So with that same thing, the left paddle, I'm going to put 10. And that moves to the other side. Now, I think there still might be a little bit off. but that will work well. We have everything on there. Now, this is where you should be at. All right, so lesson 10, this is where you should already be at. You are now going to go ahead and add the movement, right? That's all we're doing is we're going to get this to move. I'm going to make this blue paddle go up. I'm going to make this ball go down this direction and this red paddle go down this direction. We'll learn next lesson how to make it go with the uh, keyboard commands, but for now, we just want to get it to move. Just like we have an example, it's going to go one direction, and that's it, right? So with that, what I'm going to do is kind of put all of this code out and then kind of modify it as needed. So all of these need to go down, right? So sprite Y, sprite Y, sprite Y. Well, this is going to go up, but they're all going to move up and down, right? So for that, to make this one move up, we need a minus, right? Because this is 200. It needs to go to 0, so that's minus. So I'm going to grab the minus sign in here. And then the other two need to be plus. So I'm going to add plus here. And then I'm going to go back to sprites. Now the next thing we need is this needs x. So I'm going to add the sprite x for that. So we make it this way, and it's going to be a plus. I know there's a lot of bouncing around here. But essentially, sprite.y, y, y. One's going to go up, which negative to go up and then positive for the next two to go down and this X is going to positive to start. Now eventually we'll make it randomly go directions and change stuff but for now we just want to get things to move. So finally let's go back in add the sprite Y for the first three and then sprite X for the last one. Now we're going to do right pa uh, left paddle is the one that's going to go up so left paddle is going to go up so I'm going to just copy this so copy paste paste and the right paddle is going to go down so I'll paste that and then ball is going to go up and to the right or go down and to the right now whatever number we put in here is a speed right so it's 200 now so it's y is 200 and if we want to plus it right that's going to make it go down so if I do 5 
it'll go 200, 200 plus 5 is 205, and this, remember, this keeps running, so 205, 210, this runs again, 215. So I'm just gonna put five in here. It's gonna be fairly quick. You can change numbers um, as needed. I'm gonna do five. And with this, <clears throat> now I know there's gonna snake here, but I wanna show you this because this is a very common mistake. When I run this, you see this is what I call stamping, right? It's stamped over everything. And that's a problem. Quick and easy fix is throwing a background in there every single time. So I run this again, and there you go. Now it actually looks like it, because again, it's stamping over each other. So by doing this, you put background over everything, stamp, put background over the old stuff, new stamp. That's what's happening, that's that's the fix to that. And again, it, everything just runs off, right? Everything runs off, that's fine. That's all there is to the movement piece, right? So you should already have this top piece done. You're adding the draw function, and you're getting your things to move. Whatever it is, you might have a lot of stuff to move. You might have a lot of things move off the edge, shoot stuff shooting down. If you have like a turret or something, you might just have it spin infinitely in a circle, right? Again, you're just getting everything that's going to move needs to move. So you may have more, shouldn't have any less, uh, maybe one less, but again, you should have everything move that's going to move. Again, not every single sprite needs to move. You might have a platform that just sits there and does nothing, so it can jump on it, but everything that moves needs to move. And we'll gain control of it later, but that's it. All right, last piece, just like last time, what makes, again, bare minimum, what makes you proud of this and why? Uh, and then what was the most challenging, right? What, what was hard, was it remembering this? I've seen some students do ball Y equals ball X, and then it just looks really weird, and they're like, what's going on? Um, shoots over places so again making sure you have everything if you forget this again remembering to do stuff what was hard again these are the bare minimum answers and that's it right that's lesson 13's activity is making it move so taking whatever you had whatever game you had and moving it again you can't do pong that's already that's what we're working on that's what we're going to keep working on as we go through these different pieces but that is getting sprite movement, right? Create your sprites, which should be done, get your background on there, and then use that counter, right? That's where it comes down here and says the X and Y, and we come back here, right? I move the ball at Y, that was my ball Y, right? So this is why you figure out what you need to change, because when you come over here, I already have my program written for me. It's right here, right? There's all my changes, my scale, my Y, 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 and X. My scale, Y, 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 and X. That's all there is for this activity. We'll see you next lesson.